Hello everybody, I am back with another mommy video for all of you. I hope you're having a really great day. I'm kind of feeling kind of under the weather today. I was up all night with little Max who was super sick. So thank goodness for the magic of makeup and lighting and all of that. I found this article online and I thought that it would be an interesting topic for all of us to discuss because she's kind of harsh in this article, but I thought it was a very interesting thing to bring about, and it's five ways that moms make cranky toddlers. So if you have a lot to say about this topic, don't be afraid to comment down below and let me know what you think. So at the beginning of the article she says, let me tell you a secret, it is possible to have a content, happy and obedient toddler. It just takes work, honesty on your part, prayers and an open heart. That says, if I need to change my mothering style, I will. So here are some of the things that she says uh, encourage toddlers to be whiny or cranky. And the first one is they reward whining. And I definitely think that's a true one. Um, she says that you know, if you just reward your child every time they whine, they're just gonna be whining. I've definitely seen that in my parenting. Sometimes when I'm too lazy to deal with something, I just give it to them because I'm too tired or too exhausted to actually deal with it. And it does provoke that behavior more often, but then the less I reward it, then the less it happens. So let me know what you think. The next thing is, this is something that you all know I'm very big on, and it's they never establish a routine for their toddler. I think it's so important that children have routine. They need to know and have that comfort that something will always happen every day. And no, I don't mean every single day at 11.03 they need to be drinking a glass of milk. I don't mean that specific, but they need to have a general idea of what is going on. And not every single day is the exact same, obviously, but I like to, at the beginning of the day, kind of tell them what's going on so that they know what to expect. And sometimes if we have a play date set up or something, I don't tell them until right before we're about to leave because I don't want their heart to get broken if it doesn't happen. I know you guys know what I'm talking about. Where you have a play date set up, you've been telling them about it, and then the last minute the mom cancels or something, and then your child is just so heartbroken. So some of these things that she says that can definitely be routine are naps, outside playtime, what time we'll have dinner, do they have a bath before or after dinner, do they have in the morning, um, do they have a story before bed, all of that. And I told you in my nighttime routine video with my children, I always do the same routine and it works like a charm. I really like it as well because she says that there's no certainty in a toddler's life, so they always kind of feel out of the loop, like they don't know what's going on. So if you let them know what's going on, then it helps them calm down, feel comfortable about what's going on, and they don't feel left out of the loop. This next one says they spend very little quality time with your toddler. And I think this one's difficult because we can get caught up, right, in the hustle and bustle of being a mom, especially now that I'm pregnant and I'm trying to take care of two little boys and I'm not feeling great and I'm still trying to be a mom, I'm still trying to clean, I'm still trying to cook, I'm trying to be a good wife, and I just feel like I'm lacking in a lot of areas and I'm not getting the amazing quality time with my children that I like to have. But she says that you need to try to do this every single day. And I've done this, I do this all the time. I shut off my phone, or I put it in another room, I lock that door, and I just sit and I talk with my boys. And that is some of my most cherished time. I think it really helps our relationship. And I know it helps them because they feel like they know me and I'm not just so turned off all the time. Like, hey, you go play and I'm just gonna go do my thing. You do your thing, I'll do my thing. Like, you need to do things together. She says to take time to get on their eye level and ask them questions wrap your arms around them and give them loads of attention and ask them little things like, did you see any trucks today? Or did you see a puppy? Did you like that? I always ask my boys about what they saw, what they loved, what their favorite part about the day was. And obviously I'm not perfect and I don't have perfect quality time every single day with both of my children, but I can't even tell you how important it is. Sometimes Brad and I try to do dates where I take Will out and he takes Max out, just the two of them or just the two of us and or vice versa and I get alone time with them and it is so precious to me because their personality is a little different when they're alone and they're not distracted and it's just the two of us. Okay, the next thing is something oh, I'm so guilty of sometimes, but she says that they rush through daily childcare tasks where you're just hurrying, you're rushing out the door, hurry, eat breakfast, hurry, do this, get dressed, clean up, come on, let's go, let's go. And you just make your child kind of anxious because 
you're rushing through things. It says, buzzing through daily activities can send the signal of, I'm not enjoying the task of raising you. And um, sure, you are exhausted and there's many things waiting to be done, but take a few extra minutes to talk to your toddler as you take care of them. I absolutely love that. I thought that was so helpful. She says, this one-on-one -on -one conversation with a no-rush attitude helps you and your toddler connect in the necessary duties of a parent. So I know this isn't possible every single day and I didn't write this article, but I thought it was really helpful and it kind of got my brain working and thinking about how I could improve on helping my children's behavior by the way I act. Okay, and the very last one is they are not consistent with discipline. And she says, if you set rules in your home, make sure there is a penalty when they are broken and make sure it's a consistent penalty. If a toddler hits or screams, make sure you deal with it every single time. She says, when you don't take time to consistently address your toddler's negative behavior, you are creating a toddler that only keeps the rules when someone is looking. And I think, my goodness, isn't that so true? I, I have had those moments where I'm just too lazy to deal with it, but I always try to make a stand, hey, you cannot do that, that is incorrect, that is not right, you can't hit, you can't steal, you can't scream. You need to realize that there's a consequence to every action. It says, letting your child's negative behavior continue only harm him. Care enough for his well-being to make addressing negative behavior a priority. She says, I'm not writing this with a, you're a horrible mom attitude, and I'm the same way, I'm not doing that here, like, you're a horrible mom. I just thought this was really helpful to help all of us kind of think about how we kind of can help our children be more happy and make things less stressful for ourselves if we kind of take the time to look at how we're treating them, take the time out to kind of see how we can change how we do things, just to make it a little easier for everybody. So that is it for my video. I'm sure a lot of you have different comments and things that you want to say, so don't hesitate down below. And I will have the article linked down below for all of you as well, so you can check it out if you are interested. And thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video helpful, and I will see you all in my next video. Bye.